Hello and welcome to the Studio Theater's virtual play reading series where every Friday at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern we'll be bringing a play into your home. Thank you so much for joining us today for Trifles written by Susan Glassbell. My name is Grace Sodig and I am the director for this piece and others in our series. Uh, right after this stream, be sure to check back in with us on our Facebook for a live streamed Q&A session with myself and the cast. Um, before we get started, I just want to say special thank you to Gutenberg.org and to Ryan Lockle for his digital expertise. Uh, all right, so let's get started, folks. Um, let's go ahead and introduce the cast. We have the narrator played by Monica. Hi, I'm Monica. I'm based here in Orlando, Florida, and welcome to the show. George Henderson, the county attorney, played by Elias. Hi, I'm Elias. I'm coming to you from Chicago. Henry Peters, the sheriff, played by Joe. Hi, I'm Joe Lorenz. I'm an actor and improviser here in Winter Garden, Florida. Mrs. Peters, played by Allison. Hi, Allison Johnson. I'm in Claremont, Florida. Louis Hale, a neighboring farmer, played by Bobby Bell. Hi, I'm uh, a theater artist here in Orlando, and uh, yeah, Bobby Bell. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Mrs. Hale, played by Heather. Hello from Chicago. My name is Heather Curry. Thanks for joining us. And that's everyone. So please get comfortable, grab a snack, grab a drink, <laughs> grab a friend, um, and please enjoy uh, Trifles written by Susan Glassbell. Remember to come back and find us on our Facebook page to have a Q&A with the cast. All right, actors. Please leave stage and narrator, when you're ready, take us away. Scene. The kitchen is the now abandoned farmhouse of John Wright, a gloomy kitchen, and left without having been put in order. Unwashed pans under the sink, a loaf of bread outside the bread box, a dish towel on the table, other signs of incompleted work. At the rear, the outer door opens and the sheriff comes in, followed by the county attorney and Hale. The sheriff and Hale are men in middle life. The county attorney is a young man. All are much bundled up and go at once to the stove. They are followed by the two women, the sheriff's wife first, followed by Mrs. Hale, who appears disturbed and looks fearfully about as she enters. This feels good. Come up to the fire, ladies. I, I'm not cold. Now, uh, Mr. Hale, before we move things about, you explain to Mr. Henderson just what you saw when you came here yesterday morning. By the way, has anything been moved? Are things just as you left them yesterday? Oh, it, it, it's just the same. Uh, when, I dropped, when it dropped below zero last night, I thought I, I had better send Frank out this morning to make a fire for us. No use getting pneumonia with a big case on. Uh, but, but I told him not to touch anything except the stove. And you, you, you know Frank. Somebody should have been left here yesterday. Oh, yesterday. <laughs> when I had to send Frank to the Morris Center for that man who went crazy. Look, I... I I want you to know, I had my hands full yesterday, but I knew you could get back from Omaha by today, and as long as I went over everything here my Well, Mr. Hale, tell us just what happened when you came here yesterday morning. Uh, Harry and I started into town with a load of potatoes. We came along the road from my place, and as I got here, I said, uh, ah, I'm going to see if I can get John Wright to go in with me on a party telephone. I spoke to Wright about it once before, and he put me off, uh, saying folks talk too much anyway, and all he asked was for peace and quiet. Uh, I guess you know about how much he talked himself. <laughs> but I thought maybe if I went into the house and talked about it before his wife, though I said to Harry that I, I didn't know is what his wife wanted made much difference to John. Uh, let's talk about that later, Mr. Hale. I, I do want to talk about that, but... Tell now just what happened when you got to the house. Well, I, I didn't hear or see anything. I knocked at the door, and still it was all quiet inside. Well, I, I knew they must be up. It was past 8 o'clock. So I knocked again, and I thought I heard somebody say, come in. I wasn't sure. Not sure yet. 
but I opened the door, this door, and there in that rocker sat Mrs. Wright. What was she doing? She was rocking back and forth. She had her apron in her hand and was kind of pleading. And how did she look? Well, she looked queer. How do you mean queer? Well, as if she didn't know what she was going to do next and kind of done up. How did she seem to feel about your coming? Uh, I don't think she minded one way or other. She didn't pay much attention. I said, how do, Mrs. Wright? It's cold, ain't it? And she said, is it? And went on kind of pleating her apron. Well, I was surprised you didn't ask me to come up to the stove or, or to sit down, but just sat there, not even looking at me. So I said, I, I want to see John. And then she laughed. I guess you could call it a laugh. Well, I thought of Harry and the team outside. So I said a little sharp, can't I see John? No, she says, kind of dull like. Well, ain't he home, says I. Well, yes, she says, he's home. Well, then why can't I see him? I ask her out of patience. Because he's dead, she says. Dead, says I. She just nodded her head, not, not, not getting a bit excited, but, you know, rocking back and forth. And uh, I said, well, where is he? Says I. And she, 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 she pointed upstairs. Like that. I got up with the idea of going on up there. I walked from there to here. And then I says, what, what did he die of? He died of a rope around his neck, she says. He just went on pleating at her apron. <laughs> I went out and called Harry. I thought I might need help. We went upstairs, and, and there he was lying. I think I'd rather you go into that upstairs where you can point it all out. Just go on now with the rest of the story. Well, my first thought was to get that rope off. It looked... But, but, but Harry, he went up to him, and he said, uh, no, he did all right, and we'd better not touch anything. So we went back downstairs... She was still sitting that same way. Well, has anybody been notified, I asked? No, says she, unconcerned. Who did this, Mrs. Wright, says Harry. You know, he said it business-like, and she stopped pleating of her apron. I don't know, she says. You don't know, says Harry. No, she says. Well, weren't you sleeping in the bed with him, says Harry? Yes, says she, but I was on the inside. Somebody slipped a rope around his neck and strangled him and you didn't wake up, says Harry. I didn't wake up, she said after him. Well, we must have looked like it as we didn't see how that could be. For after a minute, she said, uh, I sleep sound. Uh, Harry, Harry's going to ask her more questions, but I said maybe we ought to let her tell her story first to the coroner or the sheriff. So Harry went as fast as he could to Rivers Place where there's a telephone. And what did Mrs. Wright do when she knew you had gone for the coroner? Well, she moved from that chair to this one over here and just sat there with her hands held together and looking down. I got a feeling and I ought to make some conversation. So I said I had come in to see if John wanted to put in a telephone. And at that, she started to laugh. And then she stopped and, and looked at me, scared. I, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe it wasn't scared. I, I, I wouldn't like to say it was. Soon Harry got back. And then Dr. Lloyd came, and you, Miss Peters. And so I, I guess that's all I know that you don't. 
I guess we'll go upstairs first and then out to the barn and around there. You're convinced that there was nothing important here, nothing that would point to any motive? Uh, nothing here but kitchen things. The county attorney opens the door of a cupboard closet. He gets up on a chair and looks on a shelf, pulls his hand away, sticky. Here's a nice mess. Oh, her fruit. It did freeze. She worried about that when it turned so cold. She said the fire would go out and her jars would break. Well, can you beat the women? Hell for murder and worrying about her preserves. I guess before we're through, she may have something more serious than preserves to worry about. <laughs> well, women are used to worrying over trifles. <laughs> and yet, for all their worries, what would we do without the ladies? He goes to the sink, takes a dipper full of water from the pail, pouring it into a basin, washes his hands, starts to wipe them on the roller towel, turns it for a cleaner place. Dirty towels. Kicks his foot against the pans under the sink. <laughs> Not much of a housekeeper, would you say, ladies? There's a great deal of work to be done on a farm. To be sure. And yet, I know there are some Dixon County farmhouses which do not have such roller towels. Those towels get dirty awful quick. Men's hands aren't always as clean as they might be. Ah, loyal to your sex, I see. But you and Mrs. Wright were neighbors. I suppose you were friends, too. I've not seen much of her of late years. I've not been in this house. It's more than a year. And why was that? You didn't like her? I liked her all well enough. Farmer's wives... Have their hands full, Mr. Henderson, and then... Uh, yes? It never seemed a very cheerful place. No, it's not cheerful. I shouldn't say that she had the homemaking instinct. Well, I don't know as Wright had, either. <laughs> you mean they didn't get on very well? No, I don't mean anything. But I don't think a place would be any cheerfuller for John Wright's being in it. I'd like to talk more about that a little later. I, I want to get the lay of things upstairs now. Uh, I suppose anything Mrs. Peters does would be all right, right? Uh, she was going to take in some clothes for her, you know, and a, and a few little things. Uh, we left in such a hurry yesterday. Yes, but I would like to see what you take, Mrs. Peters. And keep an eye out for anything that might be of use to us. Yes, Mr. Henderson. The women listen to the men's steps on the stairs. Then, look about the kitchen. I'd hate to have men coming into my kitchen, snooping around and criticizing. Of course, it's no more than their duty. Duty's all right, but I guess that deputy sheriff that came out to make the fire might have got a little of this on. Wish I'd thought of that sooner. Seems mean to talk about her for not having things slicked up when she had to come away in such a hurry. Mrs. Peters goes to a small table in the left rear corner of the room and lifts one end of a towel that covers a pan. She had bread set. Eyes fixed on a loaf of bread beside the bread box. She was going to put this in there. Picks up loaf, then abruptly drops it. It's a shame about her fruit. I wonder if it's all gone. I think there's some here that's all right, Mrs. Peters, yes. Here. This is cherries, too. I declare, I believe that's the only one. Oh, she'll feel awful bad after all her hard work and the hot weather. Oh, I remember the afternoon I put up my cherries last summer. And she puts the bottle on the big kitchen table, center of the room, with a sigh is about to sit down in the rocking chair. Uh, well, I must get those things from the front room closet. She goes to the door at the right, but after looking into the other room, steps back. Uh, you coming with me, Mrs. Hale? You could help me carry them. They go in the other room and reappear. Mrs. Peters carrying yeah. a dress and skirt, Mrs. Hale following with a pair of shoes. It's cold in there. Right was close. I think maybe that's why she kept so much to herself. She didn't even belong to the ladies' aid. I suppose she felt she couldn't do her part, and then you don't enjoy things when you feel shabby. 
she used to wear pretty clothes and be lively when she was Minnie Foster, one of the town girls singing in the choir. But that, oh, that was 30 years ago. This all you take in? She said she wanted an apron. <laughs> Funny thing to want, but there isn't much to get you dirty in jail. Goodness knows, but I suppose just to make her feel more natural. Uh, she said they was in the top drawer uh, in this cupboard. Yes, here. And, uh, and then her little shawl uh, that always hung behind the door. Uh, yes, here that is. Mrs. Peters. Yes, Mrs. L. Do you think she did it? Oh, I, I don't know. Well, I don't think she did. Ask him for an apron and her little shawl, worrying about her fruit. Footsteps. Mr. Peters says it looks bad for her. Mr. Henderson is awful sarcastic in the speech. It, it, he'll make fun of her, saying she didn't wake up. Well, I guess John Wright didn't wake when they was slipping that rope under his neck. No, it's strange. It should have been, must have been done awful crafty and still. They say it was such a, a funny way to kill a man, rigging up a, rigging it all up like that. That's just what Mr. Hale said. There was a gun in the house. He says that's what he can't understand. Mr. Henderson said coming out that what was needed for the case was a motive, something to show anger or a sudden feeling. Well, I don't see any signs of anger around here. She puts her hand on the dish towel, which lies on the table, stands looking down at table, one half of which is clean, the other half messy. It's wiped here. Makes a move as if to finish the work, then turns and look at loaf of bread outside the bread box, drops towel. Wonder how they're finding things upstairs. I hope she had a little more red up there, you know? Seems kind of sneaking, locking her up in town and then coming out here and trying to get her own house to turn against her. But Mrs. Hale, the law is the law. I suppose it is. Better loosen up your things, Mrs. Peters. You won't feel them when you go out. She was piecing a quilt. It's a log cabin pattern. Pretty, isn't it? I wonder if she was going to quilt it or not it. Footsteps have been heard coming down the stairs. The men enter. They wonder if she was going to quilt it or just knot it. <laughs> <laughs> Frank's fire didn't do much up there, did it? <sighs> well, let's go out to the barn and get that cleared up. The men go outside. I don't know if there's anything so strange. Are taking up our time with little things while we're waiting for him to get the evidence. She sits down at the big table, smoothing out a block with decision. I don't see if it's anything to laugh about. Of course, they got awful important things on their minds. Mrs. Peters, look at this one. Here. This is the one she was working on, and look at the sewing. All the rest of it has been so nice and even, and look at this. It's all over the place. What? It looks as if she didn't know what she was about. After she has said this, they look at each other, then glance back at the door. After an instant, Mrs. Hale has pulled a knot and ripped the sewing. Oh, what are you doing, Mrs. Hale? Uh, just pulling out a stitch or two that's not sewed very good. Uh, bad sewing always makes me fidgety. I, I, I don't think we ought to touch things. I'll just finish up this end. Mrs. Peters. Yes, Mrs. Hale? What do you suppose she was so nervous about? Oh, I don't know. I don't... I don't know if she was nervous. I sometimes so awful queer when I'm just tired. Well, uh, I must get these things wrapped up. 
they may be through sooner than we think. I wonder where I can find a piece of paper and string. In that um, cupboard, maybe? <laughs> oh, well, there's a, there's a bird cage in here. Did she have a bird? This is him. What? I don't know whether she did it or not. I've not been here for so long. There was a man round last year selling canaries cheap, but I don't know if she took one. Maybe she did. She used to sing real pretty herself. Seems funny to think of a bird in here. Yeah. But she must have had one, or why would she have a cage? I wonder what happened to it. Suppose maybe the cat got it. No, she didn't have a cat. She's got that feeling some people have about cats being afraid of them. My cat got in her room and she was real upset and asked me to take it out. My sister Bessie was like that. Queer, ain't it? What? Look. Look at this door. It's broke. One of the hinges is pulled apart. Looks as if someone must have been rough with it. Well, yes. She brings the cage forward and puts it on the table. I wish if they're going to find any evidence, they'd be about it. I don't like this place. But I'm awful glad you came with me, Mrs. Hell. It would be lonesome for me, sitting here alone. It would, wouldn't it? But I tell you what I do wish, Mrs. Peters. I wish I had come over sometimes when she was here. I wish I had. But, of course, you were awful busy, Mrs. Hill. Your house and your children. I could have come. I stayed away because it weren't cheerful, and that's why I ought to have come. I, I, I never liked this place, maybe because it's down in a hollow and you don't see the road. I don't know what it is, but it's a lonesome place. It always was. Oh, I wish I had come over to see Minnie Foster sometimes. You mustn't repress it. You mustn't reproach yourself, Mrs. Hill. Sometimes we just don't see how it is with other folks until something comes up. Not having children makes less work, but it makes a quiet house. And right out all day and no company when he did come in. Did you know John Wright, Mrs. Peters? Not to know him. I've seen him in town. They say he was a good man. Yes. He was good. He didn't drink. He kept his word as well as most, I guess, and paid his debts. But he was a hard man, Mrs. Peters, just to pass the time of day with him. Ooh, like a raw wind that gets to the bone. I should have think she'd have wanted a bird. But what do you suppose went with it? I don't know. Unless it got sick and died. She reaches over and swings the broken door. Swings it again. Both women watch it. You weren't raised around here, were you? You didn't know her. Not till they brought her yesterday. She... Come to think of it? She was kind of like a bird herself. It's real sweet and pretty, but kind of timid and fluttery. And how she did change. Tell you what, Mrs. Peters, why don't you take that quilt with you? It might take up her mind. I think that's a real nice idea, Mrs. Hale. Uh, there couldn't possibly be any objection to it, could there? Now, just what would I take? I wonder if her patches are in here and her things. Oh, here's some red. I expect this has got sewing things in it. What a pretty box. It looks like something somebody would give you. Maybe your scissors are in here. There's something wrapped up in this piece of silk. This isn't her scissors. Oh, Mrs. Peters, it's... 
Oh, it's the bird. But Mrs. Peters, look at its neck. Look at its neck. It's all other side too. Somebody uh, wrung its neck. Steps are heard outside. Mrs. Hale slips box under quilt pieces and sinks into her chair. Enter sheriff and county attorney. Well, ladies, have you decided if she was going to quilt it or not it? We think she was going to not it. Well, that's interesting, I'm sure. Seeing the birdcage. Has the bird flown? Putting more quilt pieces over the box. We think the cat got it. There's a cat? Well, not now. They're superstitious. You know, they leave. No sign at all of anyone having come from the outside. Their own rope. Now let's go up again and go over it piece by piece. They start upstairs. It would have been someone who knew just the way that she... She liked the bird. She was going to bury it in that pretty box. When I was a girl, my, my kitten, there was a boy who took a hatchet and... Uh, before my eyes, but before I could even get there, I, if they hadn't held me back, I, I, I would have heard him. I wonder how it would seem never to have had any children around. No, Wright wouldn't like the bird. A thing that sang? She used to sing. He killed that too. We don't know who killed the bird. I knew John Wright. It was an awful thing was done in this house that night, Mrs. Hale. Killing a man while he slept, slipping a rope around his neck, choked the life out of him. His neck choked the life out of him. We don't know who killed him. We don't know. There have been years and years of nothing, then a bird to sing to you? It'd be awful. Still, after the bird was still. I know what stillness is. When we homesteaded in Dakota and my first baby died, after he was two years old and me with none other then. How soon do you suppose they'll be through looking for the evidence? I know what stillness is. The law has got to punish crime, Mrs. Hill. I wish you'd seen Minnie Foster when she wore a white dress with a blue ribbon and stood up there in the choir and sang. Oh, how I wish I'd come over here once in a while. That was a crime. That was a crime. Who's going to punish that? We mustn't take on. I might have known she needed help. I know how things can be for a woman. I tell you, it's queer, Mrs. Peters. We live close together, and we live far apart. We all go through the same things. It's all just a different kind of the same thing. If I was you, I wouldn't tell her her fruit was gone. Tell her it ain't. Tell her it's all right. Take this to prove it to her. She, she may not even know whether it was broke or not. <laughs> well, that's a good thing the men couldn't hear us. Wouldn't they just laugh? Getting all stirred up over a little thing like, like a dead canary. Wouldn't they laugh? The men are heard coming down the stairs. Maybe they would, maybe they wouldn't. No, Peters, it's all perfectly clear except a reason for doing it. But you know juries when it comes to women. If there was some definite thing, something to show, something to make a story about, a thing that would connect up with this strange way of doing it. Well, I got the team around. Pretty cold out there. 
I'm going to stay here a while by myself. Uh, you, you can send Frank out there for me, can't you? I want to go over everything. I'm not satisfied. We can't do better. Uh, do you want to see what Mrs. Peters is going to take in? Oh, I guess they're not very dangerous things the ladies have picked out. Moves a few things about, disturbing the quilt pieces which cover the box. Oh, Mrs. Peters doesn't need a supervising. For that matter, a sheriff's wife is married to the law. Ever think of it that way, Mrs. Peters? Not just that way. Married to the law. Uh, I, I, I just want you to come in here a minute, George. I, I, we ought to take a look at these windows. Oh, windows. Uh, we'll be right out, Mr. Hale. Hale goes outside. The sheriff follows the county attorney into the other room. Then, Mrs. Hale rises, hands tight together, looking intensely at Mrs. Peters, whose eyes make a slow turn, finally meeting Mrs. Hale's, whose own eyes point the way to where the box is concealed. Suddenly, Mrs. Peters throws back quilt pieces and tries to put the box in the bag she's wearing. It's too big. She opens the box, starts to take the bird out, cannot touch it, goes to pieces, and stands there helpless. Sound of a knob turning in the other room. M Mrs. Hale snatches the box and puts it in the pocket of her big coat. Enter county attorney and sheriff. Well, Henry, at least we found out that she was not going to quilt it. She was going to... What is it you call it, ladies? We call it not it, Mr. Henderson. Curtain. Yay, congratulations, a huge round of applause to our cast today. That was Trifles, written by Susan Glassfell, presented by the Studio Theater. Thank you to our cast, our creative team, and for you watching at home. Be sure to check in our, to our Facebook for the live stream that I just keep talking about. <laughs> um, next in our virtual play series is Liz Estrada, written by Aristophanes and adapted by our very own Bobby Bell. Um, that will be airing on Friday, May 8th at 1 o'clock p.m. Just stay in tune to our social media, like us and follow us, and you'll get all the information there. Please continue to support theater and the arts in any way you can. Stay safe, stay home, and stay healthy, and of course, stay positive. Much love from the studio. See you guys soon.